Uh oh, guess what day it is? Guess what day it is? Huh? Anybody? Julie, hey, guess what day it is? Hello, everyone. It's Robbie here, and you know what the day is. Yes, you do. You know what the day is. We got another fun filled episode of Retro Robbie's Wild Wednesday. Mr. Chemistry Packs. And today I got four packs, which doesn't seem like four packs in here, but I bought four packs from Max in Maine. I am all in at $34.36. And this is what he says. There's not much description here, but he does say vintage 50, 1952 to 1989, six cards per pack. That's probably why there's not much in there. Only six cards. He says one minimum, one semi star, at least $5 value. And the rest are all ranging, he says. So they all come in penny sleeves. That's all he says. So there's not much to work with here, but six cards per pack. And again, I am in at $34.76. And let me get my scissors here. I thought I had my left hand scissors, but I don't see them. So I'm going to use right hand at this time. Uh, I'm that talented. I use both hands for cutting scissors. So there we go. Let's see what we get here with these four packs from Max in Maine. And I've seen the first one there. We're just going to go top to bottom, I guess. Oh, so here we go. Oh, let's put a little sleeve under there. Yes, so you don't peek. I don't like peekers. Oh, but I don't. I'll get some rubber bands with my package here. So here we go. And of course, everything's taped. Man, you people in your tape. And getting the funny colored uh, top lower sleeves. So here we go. Dang, if I can get it off. I'll try not to show it last card here. There we go. Oh, here we go. Well, the first one's 1960. But <laughs> you're not going to like what we see there. Oh, uh, we got probably one of the most beat up 1960 card of red uh, shortness from the Milwaukee Braves. Wow, that thing has been on someone's bicycle spokes, been used and abused, passed around 8 million times. That sucker has seen better days in its light. So uh, I don't have that card, so I got to take it. But there is red from the Milwaukee Braves. Very, very beat up card right there. Woof. <laughs> so I guess a vintage card is better than no vintage card. But there we go. We got red started off with on a 1960. Up next, we got 1982 of Larry Anderson. After that, more 82 of Ed Lynch of oh, New York Mets. 1980 of Rick Rodin. And last card is going to be 1977, Mickey Scott. So, and here comes our prior hit of the pack. And we got George Cow. All right. Not too bad. I don't know if I'd rank it four bucks because the condition of this thing is horrible. So, we got some major paper loss there. Looks like, I don't know what that is there on the bottom. Let's show you see right there in the light. I have no idea what that is. Looks like there's tape. There's a crease. This thing's been around the block 8 million times, too. So that is another one in horrible condition. Looks like there's a rubber band around it. This thing's been so used and abused. But getting good old George Cal from 1958. Baltimore Oreos, a uh, longtime announcer for the Tigers as well. Uh, very nice card right there. Even though it is beat up and been through the right here. Uh, I'll show the price. Unfortunately... I don't think it's probably worth that much, but hey, it is what it is. All right, there's the first pack. Oh, uh, well, we are getting vintage. They're just not very good vintage at all. So here comes the second pack. Uh, second pack looks like a, I'm going to start off there with a 1964. And my gosh, you people in your tape. Ugh, I hate you people in your tape. Oh, uh, here we go. Let's see if I can use my garbage screwdriver. Oh, man. Oh, man. All right. Now, uh, here we go with this pack here. And, of course, I won't, probably won't be able to save most of these sleeves because, man, they're so t taped up. Uh, we're going to start out with 1964 Hoyt Wilhelm of the Chicago White Sox. Again, not the best shape, but doesn't look like – oh, yeah, 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 it's 
pretty bad corner right there. Uh, not in the greatest shape either, but a decent star. We got Hoyt Wilhelm of the Chicago White Sox. Low number card right there, 1964. Uh, we'll take that. Well, after that, we got Larry Bittner, uh, 1981 Tops. Which kind of Cubs? Get my Cubs love there. After that, we get up a beat up 78 of Denny Martinez. Oh, man, it's one thing to get a beat up 50, 50s card, but a 78? Come on now. Oh, that's in horrible condition. So, and after that, we got Doug DeCensus there from the Baltimore Orioles. That one's in a little bit better shape. And that last card's going to be. Oh, uh, we're getting a uh, Ross Sabrina card there of Reggie Jackson. This is 1984, if I assume right. Yep, 1984. So getting your puppy chow. Get your baseball puppy, card. Dog, 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 there. Dog, dog, puppy chow. Reggie Jackson from the California Angels. So here comes our hit card, if you want to call it that. And it's going to end up being a very beat up 1958 Tony Kubek. Well, there it is. Ooh, I think that's been in the washing machine a couple times, man. That feels rough. <laughs> Again, probably in someone's bicycle spokes and big old crease down the middle there. I think you can see it. Hopefully you can see it. Well, there it is. It's probably was in someone's pocket for a couple years as well, but still not a bad car. 1958 Tony Kubek from the New York Yankees. So, I mean, he's promising what he's saying, but man... These conditions are just horrible. I mean, even for 50s cars, they're just not up to par. So, I don't know. What are you going to do? No, that's why we do mystery packs. So, you can enjoy the fun and see if they're worth getting or not. So, uh, of course, I got to get through all this blast of tape. Oh, man. Oh, go through this here. There we go. Man, you people in your masking tape, your painter's tape. I don't think it's necessary. Just make my life a living hell. That's all you do. So here we go. If I can get it out. Man, my gosh. Uh, I still want to cooperate with me today. So there we go. We're going to start in 1969 there. We got the batting leaders of Kale Yaskremski, Danny Cater of the Oakland A's, and we got Tony Oliva from the Twins. Again, not a good condition card. I've gotten I've gotten actually this card recently from another mystery pack, and it wasn't in this bad shape. So there is a huge crease right there. These are just horrible condition cards. Uh, there we go, 1969 there. Bang leaders, that's good old number one. Uh, we'll probably give that away in a mystery pack. Oh, it's not in good condition, so what are you going to do? Uh, up next, we got 1988 score, Tom Henke from the Toronto Blue Jays. Up next, we got Reggie Smith there out of 1981 from the L.A. Dodgers. Jim Eisen from 1982, Chicago White Sox. And that last car is going to be in 1967, Dick Ellsworth from the Philadelphia Phillies. And I would say this is probably be, be the first passable vintage card, I would say. I mean, yeah, there's some conditioning issues, but I expect that. But not as bad as some of the others. No creases in this one. This one looks pretty decent, so we'll take it. Uh, 389. Oh, uh, that one is actually passable right there, so we'll take that. And here comes our so-called hit of the pack. And we got a very beat up Bill Bazarowski there. A very horribly conditioned car right there. You can see the crease going down the middle. And it's bent there, bent there, bent everywhere. I could probably put that in my wallet afterwards. And it'll still be in better shape than this card. So, wow. Really horrible conditioned cards here. So, here comes pack four. Oh. Uh, all right, what do you guys think? Let me know. This one's going to be a little bit tougher. You get an advantage, like they said. They're just so horrible conditioned. I get conditioning can be rough at times. I can see it, but, you know, there's bad conditioning and there's horrible conditioning. And I think we got the horrible conditioning on this one. So I don't know what to think of this. So, there it is. We got the belt busters or belt buck belters. Sorry. Belt buck. Yeah. Buck belters. Say that fast five times. 
of the Pittsburgh Pirates. We got Willie Stargell and we got Don uh, Clendon. Oh, again, very beat up for a 67. Or I think this is 64, actually. No, not 64. Uh, it should be 66, sorry. Man, I am totally brain dead today. I was on vacation, so get a couple days off. You got to get back in the groove of it. So there we go. Really Stargell and Don there. Very beat up 66 card right there. I will have one of these, so I'll probably be giving away here for free. You don't have to pay for it. You'll get it for free. I won't do you wrong like that. You just get it for free. Oh, any album fillers out there that you need? We got 1982 Alvin Woods of the Toronto Blue Jays. We got Sparky Lyle there for the Texas Rangers. Man, I forgot he played for the Texas Rangers. He spent all those years with the Yankees. So there he is, Sparky Lyle, 1980. Wow, it's a decent shape. After that, we got 1982 Cesar Cedeno there for the Houston Astros. And we got Buck Martinez there, 1981 tops there from the Milwaukee Brewers. Here comes the last card, probably beat up some sort. And oh, yeah, look at that. We got a young Gaylord Perry. Well, probably middle age. Does he ever look young? I don't think so. Oh, uh, we got a mid year form of Gaylord Perry. And man, is that abused, used, and abused. I swear someone fall <laughs> that sucker in the Hitler wallet or whatever next to the condom i don't know man this is just horrible a good card and a bad grade and you'd be lucky if you got a one on that oh uh, there is gaylord perry from the san francisco giants so mid-year form uh there is the back uh, unfortunately, I don't think I have him in a 69, so I got to take this as my filler card. So there we go. We got a 1969 Gay Lord Perry. So I got a little bit of a up to do here. Uh, I'd be interested to see what you guys think about this mystery pack. So uh, uh, get your thoughts together. I will add all this up, and I will give it my overall thumbs, ratings, and my thoughts. So stay tuned. All right, we are back with those four packs from Max and Maine. And if you recall, I'm all in at $34.76. Um, I'll, I'll go over the highlight of this. I'll kind of give a caveat. What I did, since these cars are so beat up, I did, to make it semi-fair, at least I think so, I don't know, I made uh, these vintage cars 25% Beckett low value. Um... They're just so beat up. I mean, look at this red card. We'll start with the first pack here. Uh, that would have been the uh, top card right there. It would be the 1960 red card. But it's so beat up. There's actually a V engraved in his <laughs> forehead. I mean, this eight-year-old kid, like, used his cards like no one else back in the, in the early 60s. It is what it is, but man, I can't, it's hard to put value on something this bad of a shape. Um, is there value? Yeah, there's there's going to be a little value there on these cards, but what are you going to do? It, it, it's so hard to, to say, what's the value of this card that is so beat up, it's almost unrecognizable. So I put 25% Beckett, you saw the prices on the video um, I only gave it 25% value back at low because these cards are all beat up. There's only one card that I think I, well, I know I did at regular back at low and this, it's the Dick Ellsworth there. That's probably the most passable card. Um, normally what I would see, this is normally what I would get from people would be cards in this kind of shape right here, which is pretty decent. Oh. Uh, Back to pack one. Um, again, this is the best card. I value this at $3.75. Again, maybe a little high, maybe a little low. I don't know. George Kell ended up at $2.50. Um, Beckett Low, or I should say, yeah, Beckett Low for pack one ended up being $6.57. The rest of the cards in here was this filler. It's just commons from the early 80s. Nothing to write home about. You know, better than junk wax for the most part, but still. Not that great either. So pack two, again, the high card would be this Tony Kubek. Uh, again, Beckett low at 25% would be about five bucks. 
Well, that might be fair, but man, this feels like it's been in the washer a couple times. Um, dried out. <laughs> it's probably wet. Dried out. It's it, it does not feel like a card. It's just a big old crease in the middle, as you can see. Just I don't know if it's worth five bucks. It may or may not be. Maybe to someone, but that's why I put on it. Twenty five percent back it low. Uh, Hoyt William was next at 64 again, beat up again. Really bad corner right there. I gave it back at low of uh, three bucks. Again, high, lower, indifferent. This ended up being the best pack at $8.75. Not too far behind it was pack number three. Uh, Beckett Low, well, the highest card, Beckett Low at 25% was this 1968 Bill Mazeroski. Um, I gave it a $5 value. Again, oh, a whole bunch of creases right there. Um, again, is it worth five bucks? <sighs> I don't know. I don't think so, but that's just me. Uh, also, we got this 1969, uh, 68 bearing leaders of the Yasman, Danny Cater, and uh, Tony Oliva. I gave that uh, Beckett Low of a buck. Uh, I'm sorry, no, Beckett Low of 250. And again, I, I kept the 67 at Beckett Low. Again, this is the best condition card. No creases or anything like that. Just normal wear and tear that you would see in a 67. So I give that one a buck. Uh, Beckett Low for this ended up being $8.71. Slightly behind pack two, but overall, it is what it is. And this last pack here, um, again, ended up being Beckett Low $2.10. Um, belt buckle, belt. I can't even say it right still. Buck Belters. I only gave 60 cents. Again, horrible condition. Um, it's just the value is really not there. I've gotten like two or three of these in much better shape than this one. So, And the 69, Gaylord Perry. I ended up being worth a buck back at low at 25%. Uh, give you a little thing on Gaylord Perry there in mid life form you want to call him that he always looks old even looks old in the 69 what am i saying there are two versions of gaylor perry there's this version which is the correct version or the right version or the variation which has his name in white there were a couple of 69s that were done in white including a famous mickey Mantle one and so it was gaylord perry but obviously this is not it if it would, it would probably be worth something even in this bad condition. So, But it's a regular issue. Again, really bad shape. So, again, all in, I spent $34.76. So total Beckett Low at 20% value of this ends up being $26.13. I lost $8.63. How do I feel about this? Well, if it were slightly better condition cards, I would probably give it a home run here. I would have, I'd be all over this thing day and night. But even if they were slightly in better condition, these are in unexcusable, horrible conditions. <laughs> You're just getting rid of old cards that have uh, been in your family for 60 years and pawing them off on people. That's what you're doing. Um, there's just no value. I mean, not much value here. I'm sure there is, but not much. Good cards in poor condition. That's, like, <laughs> that's the best way to say it. Our good players in poor condition. That's probably the best I can say with this. Um, yeah, there's just horrible, horrible condition. You can go anywhere and find probably stuff better condition than this. Will you pay a little bit more? Yeah, probably. But again, you want... Quality or do you want quantity? I choose quality. This is not quality. <laughs> this is very poor, low end PSA one, if that even. So it is what it is. I don't have some of these cards, so I gotta put them in my albums as starter filler. That's probably what the end up these end up being for the most part is starter filler. You don't have it, you gotta take it. So, you know, how I rank this. I rank this from anywhere from two thumbs up, two thumbs down. Uh, some people might be critical of what I'm saying, but I'm going to give it zero thumbs. Yeah, I just, I'm just not impressed. They're just horrible. If they were slightly better. I'd be in a lot better mood on this. I would be into it more. But man, when you get something like that, and it is just horrible, horrible condition. Tony Kubak doesn't deserve that. 
it's it's just not worth it in my my book. It's it's just I mean they're falling apart for the most part. Um, some people might say, "Hey, vintage is vintage." Yeah, I would agree, but man, this is just garbage vintage. Uh, like I said, good players on bad cards. That's the best way I can say it. But I'd really like to know what you guys think. You guys, I'm, your opinions mean so much to me. I love seeing them. I love your thoughts. Leave a comment on this video if you like it, didn't like it, what you liked, what you didn't like. And we are so close to 700. Last time I checked, we're six subscribers away. So if you have not subscribed, hit that subscription button. It means the world to me. And you get these kind of videos every Wednesday night. Good, bad, ugly. This is kind of on the ugly side, but... Still good players on bad cards. So until next week, Retro Robbie saying, collect what you love.